Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's Leadership Forum webinar, a part of our Leadership Forum webinar series for September 7th. Really glad that you joined us today. Um, I'm your host, Mark Anderson, uh, Chief Client Officer with Eldermark. My contact information is there in the event that you have any good ideas for our webinar series or any questions or it needs some follow up from one of our topics, um, please feel free to message me. I'm just checking messages. Okay, great. I want to be sure that I address anything that goes on the question panel in the control panel. All right. Well, we regularly schedule these webinars to accomplish a few things. You know, we got this series started back during COVID to create uh, another way for us here at Eldermark to support our customers and especially leaders in our senior living customer organizations. And so these webinars held every month are designed to help our customer leaders learn about technology solutions that can help them in achieving their goals as senior living leaders to share information and resources relevant to our work and of course to support each other in our work. Just a couple other reminders here. If you have any key staff changes at your community, please do share those with us. You can send those to support at eldermark.com. We really appreciate that. We'd like to keep our records as updated as possible. And then be sure to read the latest release notes as they are sent out to your organizations. Um, I understand from reviewing, I think it was the last group of release notes, there are some really great updates and changes, especially to the risk management module within the software um, that I think you should check out. So if you haven't checked that out, do so. If you did not receive the release notes and you would like to, or get somebody's name on that release notes email list, again, you may contact support at eldermark.com and we will accommodate you there. All right, just a few technology updates before we get into our topic today. Um, wanted to just bring you up to date on a few things. Uh, if you've been following our series, a couple of these we maybe mentioned last time, but I wanted to bring forward uh, this short list of some updates. Um, we recently completed an integration with Peerlytics software. This is an infection control and antibiotic stewardship management platform. Um, it is basically pretty awesome in what it delivers as a solution for infection control and antibiotic stewardship management. Um, it is designed for senior living. It is CMS, CDC, and OSHA compliant in uh, its content and what it asks the user uh, to do. Great reporting features. My favorite feature of this is uh, they actually take a schematic diagram of your building, put it into the system so that you can map um, in your building and manage uh, the presence of infections, not only for residents, but also if you wish to do so with your workforce. Um, if you want any more information about any of these updates, let me know or contact uh, your contact person, your customer support manager here at Eldermark. Just another reminder that we did complete this year an integration with the Yardi financial system that connects the billing module to the Yardi General Ledger Financials. Can't help but uh, mention this, and we're actually gonna get into this a little bit more later in this webinar, our integration with eMenu Choice, uh, point of sale and dining services management software. Um, especially popular this summer has been interest in our integration with the Engage social engagement app. Um, this is a complete social engagement software solution, um, particularly helpful with our customers in managing their compliance activities with some of the new assisted living, living regulations um, here in Minnesota and in California, especially. Um, again, let us know if you're interested in learning more about that. A very recent development uh, we are calling Elder Forms 
And this is in concert with our work with Worldview Technology Solutions. And this is an e-document management solution. Basically what Elder Forms allows you to do is it allows you, enables you, to manage all of like your move-in paperwork electronically. So all those forms, your contracts, your disclosure documents, your bill of rights, your all those things are loaded into Elder Forms and formatted for how you want to use them. And then you can manage them electronically where the resident can just sign with their finger on a touch screen in the office or in their apartment with you or you can send the documents out securely to a responsible party to review and sign and return. Um, and then there is a storage solution as well with all these e-documents. So again, we're really excited about this. Customers have been asking for something like this for some time, and uh, we have found the right partner to build this um, for Eldermark at Worldview. And then finally, um, internally, we are uh, launching what we call Elder Smarts. This is an exciting development. It is a data management platform that also provides important and um, kind of one source of truth data analytics for the user. Elder Smarts is basically uh, a platform where you can take data from your different softwares and sources that you use to run your company or your organization or your building and push that data into Elder Smarts, and then Elder Smarts will help you organize it in ways that make sense for you in what you choose to measure, and then provide analytic reporting uh, uh, out the other side. Um, really cool tool. Again, if you're interested in learning more, uh, let one of us know here at Eldermark, and we can show you how Elder Smarts can work for you. Just a few notes before we get going here. Um, all of you will remain muted during the webinar. Um, the, we have lots of visual content today, so we're not gonna be on camera today. It's just gonna be all, all uh, on-screen visuals for you. Please use the question feature in the webinar control panel. If you have a question or comment to share, we will address those as we may uh, during the session. Um, you will receive a link to the recording of this webinar. It's about within 24 hours after we adjourn, so watch your email for that. And of course, you are welcome to contact myself or any of our presenters directly via email after our presentation today. All right, so today's topic, we are going to cover increasing resident dining satisfaction with scratch cooking and technology, importantly, introducing fresh menus. And we have some special guests with us that I'll introduce in just a moment. But just a few comments on our discussion or our menu discussion for today. Um, why consider technology like eMenu Choice for your dining management? And why fresh menus? And how does it benefit that resident dining experience? And then importantly, considering scratch cooking. You know, a lot of us talk about that. Um, you know, cooking shows are so popular right now on, on different streaming and, and television platforms. Um, people are building what we call the proverbial HGTV kitchens in their homes. Uh, cooking has kind of taken on a really big part of, uh, of who we are and what we do, maybe particularly post COVID, if you will. But the senior living dining experience, I just had a few comments here. You know, I've been in senior living for, I'll just say a long time. And I remember first starting out as a nursing home administrator in the early eighties. And, you know, senior living at that time was pretty much, you know, the senior living customer comes to the dining room and they are just served what they are served and they're to be happy with that. Uh, not a lot of choice. Here is the menu, um, like it or don't like it. Um, certainly accommodating certain dietary restrictions minimally uh, or diet orders. But anyway, not that great of an experience. It was basically show up to eat. And we've really moved now into a true dining experience. Um, you know, food really matters. All these new dining trends, especially I think with the boomers, uh, starting to enter the senior living market as senior living resident customers, 
you know, this is a generation that has enjoyed eating out with their friends and having a lot more variety in their food and dining experiences during their lives. And so we see these influences coming into senior living more and more with, you know, kind of that restaurant style dining experience or creating less formal, maybe casual dining places within a senior living community. Um, you know, that private dining room, that's always been around, that's very popular. Things like coffee shops and the grab and go concept has found its way into senior living. Um, you know, cooking demos, being able to sit within a demonstration kitchen and watch the cook or the chef prepare your meal in front of you. Um, and then these influences too of concepts of like farm to table, those you know, those influences featuring locally grown or locally sourced ingredients for including on the menu, seasonal menus, of course, um, vegetarian and vegan influences, um, more and more things like gluten restrictions, and then some of those healthy emphases on things like brain healthy and heart healthy diets. I mean, things have really, really changed and continue to change around this. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's food that really matters. And dining is such an important part of the day. And I think we can agree that, you know, in a senior living community, a consistently good experience in the dining room can equate to a generally happy resident customer where maybe they're even a little more forgiving about some of the other stuff that goes on. So long as that dining experience is tasty and pleasant and consistent. And with that, let me introduce our guest presenters today for this Leadership Forum webinar. Um, joining us, coming back to us, I guess, today, these two, uh, Matt Steenerson, founder at eMenu Choice, and Dawn Nicholson, uh, one of the founders of Passion for Dining and Nutrition. Uh, Matt and Dawn, I just think we will turn things over to you. And as questions come in, I can help you field those. Great. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. And thanks for uh, watching the chat for us. Um, I'm going to uh, present my screen, which was easy in practice, but we'll see how smooth it goes here. There we go. So uh, yeah, thanks everybody for, for joining. Um, and thanks, Mark, for the, the introduction. Um, I see many familiar faces uh, or names on the call, uh, but for those of you who aren't aware of us or maybe haven't seen us in a while, um, eMenu Choice is a senior dining point of sale for all levels of, of care throughout the whole kind of senior continuum. Um, we are only focused on senior living, so we're not in like hospitals and schools and other things like that. We just specifically focus on, on senior living. So we were started. Uh, by a senior living community in St. Paul called Ling Bloomston. And really the idea of Eating Your Choice came out of this resident advisory committee that they have. Um, you know, Ling Bloomston really prides itself on providing a lot of choices and a lot of options to the residents, but they just weren't really feeling like they were getting the choices that, that they wanted. So um, it sort of started off as an idea to provide images um, of all the food items and descriptions to the residents so they knew what the options were and so they could choose kind of more easily. Um, they found me in 2013 through a, a mutual friend and we started building kind of that simple picture-based solution to replace these huge three-ring three, three ring binders that they had um, in each of their 14 dining rooms uh, on their campus in St. Paul. Um, really, it sort of quickly uh, it quickly changed from there to say, well, if we're already showing the pictures and um, the residents are making their choices, why don't we allow the staff to be able to actually place the order from the same app um, as they're showing the pictures? And then we could improve staff efficiency and and reduce uh, reduce tabulation and reduce a bunch of kind of extra work that the communities were having to do in the kitchen. Um, and then that sort of, once we had that data, it sort of quickly spun into, well, we have the data for day-to-day -day kitchen operations. Maybe we can use the same data to simplify administration in the billing office through tracking and reporting of, of the same stuff. And so those goals that we had then, like way back in 2013, are really the same as, as our goals today. We're sort of, we've broadened it out to, to take other needs. And then we've also sort of focused it more in the things that make the most impact in the communities. 
And now we're in over 300 communities in uh, the US and Canada and, and still kind of growing quickly. So uh, key features, this isn't everything, but just sort of uh, on one slide. Um, really importantly, we're integrated with EHRs. So Eldermark, Point Click Care, others that are on here and, and not on here. I think it's really important to reduce the need for staff to, you know, double enter information, um, avoid mistakes, improve accuracy, um, and improve efficiency for, for people. So we think that's really important. Um, we support a bunch of different meal plans that are defined by you, the communities. And so within these meal plans, we have meal credits where, you know, one meal is, is worth one credit um, or spend down accounts where it's dollar based or points based and you can get a certain number of meals or, or dollars per month or per day. Um, and then once the spend down account is kind of depleted, then it'll kind of roll up to the residents spend up account or like the house account, as it were, um, so that billing is really easy and clear um, and basically automatic. And that's kind of the important part. Uh, we're able to capture orders and capture revenue across all the venues in your community. So as Mark said you know, in his intro, you know, fast casual is becoming uh, an important factor in not only kind of dining externally, but within communities. Um, so we can handle the traditional dining room. We're definitely in like salons and spas and things like that within communities and campuses, cafes, fast casual even down to like gift shops and activities and kind of anything that you need to bill your residents for um, or keep track of within the community, we can do all that in email you choice. And then again, kind of importantly, integrate that information back into your, your EHR at the end of the month for billing. We do have a resident and family portal so that you know, residents, family members can log in, view accounts, view balances, um, Importantly, order online for kind of pickup um, or room delivery orders. This was obviously really important during COVID, um, but sort of in the post-COVID world, it's it's sort of become table stakes that you have to provide some way for your residents to log in and, and order food if, uh, if they want something like that. They're just like, everybody's sort of getting used to that. So it's, uh, it's, it's you know, if it's not expected now, it, it will be expected soon. Um, and so we have a nice simplified, you know, user resident specific um, portal that they can log into to, to do that stuff. We also have our reservations module. So it's really flexible whether you do like multiple seatings per meal or whether you just want reservations to help kind of pace the kitchen throughout so that you're not getting everybody showing up at six o'clock or I guess 430 for our clientele. Um, we have we have that option as well. Uh, most of our customers are using e-menu choice for employee meals, um, so they might have a different price or different options, but all that's something that you can set up in e-menu choice. And then, of course, guest meals, whether they're guests of residence or or just uh, public coming in and using your, your facilities, your restaurant, your cafe, whatever. Um, if they're guests of residence, they can use the residence spend down account if you, if you want them to, or they could pay with credit card or cash or kind of whatever means, uh, whatever means you allow. And then really importantly, and kind of the focus on the rest of today is um, dietitian approved menus available via fresh menus. So I'll let Don get into sort of fresh menus specifically and, and all the great things about that. But why is it important to have these menus in your point of sale? Um, really, it's about that goal of, of staff efficiency and, and saving time, right? So sort of you only get out of the menus what you put into them. And so at eMenu Choice, we have all these features where you can add images and descriptions, um, alternates based on allergens and diets and textures and things like that. Um, that if, you know, if somebody's on diabetic, maybe they get a, a low sugar substitute. Or if someone has an allergen to peanuts or eggs, you want to make sure that those items are flagged so that um, they don't order those or they get substituted. Um, and then modifiers. So if you have a hamburger, uh, you know, what types of cheese do you offer? Do you have pepper jack or, or American or, or other things? Um, all that stuff is really helpful to have in the system, but someone needs to put it in. And that can take time to, to do it right. And so with fresh menus, all that stuff is sort of available for you turnkey. And then importantly, it's easily adjustable within the tools that we already have. Um, and with support from Don and her team to, uh, to meet the specific needs of your community. If you need to replace something that your residents don't like, or if you know an ingredient isn't 
in your area or necessarily available. Um, all of that stuff is is adjustable within eMenu Choice. So with that, I'll turn it over to Don to talk a little bit more about Fresh Menus specifically. Thank you, Matt and uh, Mark. Uh, so we we embarked on this uh, Fresh Menus, I think, in early spring. Um, PDN and eMenu have been um, working together for a few years. We also worked with Ling Bloomston and that's where we developed um, quite a bit of the menus that we're using. And so we were familiar, very familiar with each other. And I, I, I can't remember what day it was, but Matt and I finally said, you know, we need to do this. It's time to do this. So the um, e-menu, Matt and his team requested that anything that we would develop be approved by dietitians uh, as a nice to have kind of a thing even though in assisted living it's not required and um, in the skill that is we decided that we wanted menus that were um, right out of the gate approved by dietitians so but the starting point was not you know how many daily requirements do we need of each thing each day the starting point was what's a good menu you know crafted by a chef what do we like to eat what are all of those components when you put them together, color and all of that. So we thought um, really hard about how these menus go together and balancing uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. There's a soup included every day. Most everything is scratch made. There is things on there that we call speed, speed scratch and you know shortcuts that we suggest. And then once we had developed those menus and we had them approved by a dietitian, I built everything, all of the data in eMenu Choice. So I loaded all of the menu items in there, created the templates, the modifiers, the allergens, and all of that. And so um, with that, Matt, I can we can go to the next screen. So as I mentioned, you know, we we started with what we like to eat at home and scratch made with fresh ingredients. We do eat a lot of fresh food at home and we know that's what's best for us, including our most vulnerable population and our elders. Patrick and I would think about, you know, what's the protein that we're gonna start with and then what complements that flavor for this time of year. We balance colors and we would prepare the meal and write the recipes. I took a lot of pictures. The pictures are on our website. I wanted to do that too, to give people an idea of how to plate. We get a lot of questions about plating. You know, we just don't know how to plate. We don't know how to make it look pretty. So I put a lot of the pictures out there to give you an idea of how to, how to add that extra touch. Um, and if you notice on some of them, you know, like if there's a salad dressing, it's in a, in a nice little bowl or in a mini ramekin. It's not just in a plastic PC cup that we call them those plastic little cups with the lid that you get from you know takeout restaurants and it's not packets you know they're they're um they're placed nicely on the plate and then we we wrote as i mentioned we wrote the recipes and we scaled them for a yield of 50 and we created uh step-by-step -step methods and that little um expression at the mod at the bottom, not all cooks have your experience. I reminded Patrick of that a lot. I would, I would um, be typing as he'd tell me, you know, how to how to make the recipe, and I would remind him all of the time, "We're not all you. We need to explain this better. What pan should they start with? How should they do this? You know, don't jump to um, something that you assume that we would all know, because I I know that we're not all trained. Some some of the cooks we're hiring, this is their first time job. And the other thing is, you know, ethnic diversity. And I remember vividly working with someone who was scared to death to make a hamburger because she, that's not what they eat in their country. And she had never made a hamburger before. So we tried to take it down to the level that we're not making any assumptions. Like I mentioned in uh, the assisted living requirements, they, um, this is the meal and menu requirement tool that uh, the Minnesota Department of Health has put out for the new assisted living rules. And what you see highlighted in yellow are all of those requirements that these menus meet. 
They are, um, there's three meals a day. They're nutritious meals. They're made with seasonal fresh fruits and vegetables. If you go with a four week cycle, your menus are uh, written a week in advance. It's up to you to make sure they get posted, but you know, it's all there. The substitutions are there. You, um, I built a lot of the substitutions in, but as the, as the customer, you can change those. And so when somebody doesn't want green beans, you know, there's other choices in there. There's a fresh salad or there's, you know, fruit or however you want to build it. And then at the bottom, the meals follow the USDA guidelines. That's that dietitian approval we talked about. And the my plate is the best place to start when you're where when you're wanting to meet those dietary guidelines. And we looked at every plate, at the protein, at the vegetables, at the grains. And this is what MDH has put out. And I wonder how many people's plates actually stand up to this, you know, as far as is, is there fruit and vegetable and grain and protein on all of your plates? So when I worked with the dietitian, after looking and making sure that we met the guidelines for the my plate, you know, we have the protein, we have the, um, the vegetables. Then we looked at portion size and do we have enough of each thing every day? And so this is what I looked at. And this is from the nutrition care manual that's used in many long-term care um, facilities. And this is what we use when we're um, wanting to make sure that we comply with CMS regulations. And so there's a daily column and a weekly column. And we went back and forth and she would, she told me in a few places, you need a little bit more grain or you need a little bit more fish. And so one of the things I wanna make, wanna make clear is that our daily specials in conjunction with what you have always available is what meets these. So they want you to offer nine ounces of fish per week, um, a fish or a seafood. That doesn't mean that your residents are going to eat that. A resident can't eat everything that they want us to offer, but this is what needs to be made available. And so we went to great lengths to make sure that we were, that we were meeting these guidelines. So included with fresh menus in eMenu Choice is that four week menu cycle. Right now we have created the spring and summer cycle and we will be creating one for fall and winter. And then as we move forward, we'll be updating. So next spring and summer, we'll add some, some new items to what we built this year and so on. So we're gonna always keep it fresh and current. There's always gonna be fresh seasonal made from scratch options. There's breakfast, lunch, dinner, soup, and then what we call the always available, which is, you know, what you would um, have just as, as it says, always available. So if they don't like what's on the menu, what else can they order? And is it a grilled cheese? Is it a hamburger? And we created items that are um, fresh and hopefully a little bit more out of the ordinary. We created a nice plated salad. There's um, a fish entree, a chicken breast, but this is where you can easily customize it. If you have things that you know, well, this works really well for us, then that's what you would add to your, to your always available template. And then we ordered, um, or we loaded all of the supporting modifiers, the allergens and the alternates. And this is where too, you would customize. So say for instance, with hamburgers, you know, I made um, you know, a guess on what would you include with a hamburger? you know, probably ketchup, mustard, lettuce, tomato, pickles, you know, um, when you're ordering a salad, what are the dressings that you would have available? So I guessed, you know, some of the basics, but that's where you could easily go in and say, you know, we don't offer all those or we offer others in addition to this. So it's easy to customize. And then each menu item will have a recipe and those are written in Word so that you can customize them. As I mentioned, they're written to a yield of 50. And the way that I uh, created it is the yield can easily be changed so that if you need them for 25 or 100 or whatever the number is that you need them for, you can customize those. 
we've also created an order guide or an ingredient list to go with each week. And then obviously we will support them with the menus, the recipes and the customization. We're always available to answer questions and, and help in any way that we can. This is what the menu looks like. And I will send you with fresh menus, a PDF of each week that has the uh, dietitian signature on it so that you have that for your reference. But then I also send the Word version of this so that you can add at the top your own, um, your own name. If this is what you wanna post, you can remove the line at the bottom if you like. And then if there are things that you do need to move around for whatever reason, you know, you can customize that. And if that's, if you like this template, it's yours to, to use and to post. And this is a screenshot of, uh, if you're not familiar with eMenu Choice, what the ordering screen looks like. And I wanted to include this to show a little bit how um, we set up some of these modifiers. And I cannot stress enough, you know, Mark and Matt both talked about integrating with the resident data and how important it is that you start with that resident data. It's so helpful because you're not having to enter that, you're not having to, when you get an admin, whether it be a long-term care resident or a new assisted living resident, or if you're in a TCU, you're not having to enter that into your medical record and then turn around and enter it again into your menu system. It's there right away. And so this uh, resident, Bill has, um, in the yellow, you see that he has um, high carbohydrate. We, we created that as an intolerance. So he shouldn't have foods that are high in carbohydrates because of his diabetes. And then he also has um, intolerant of tree nuts. So for dessert, there's a chocolate cake. And instead of saying, well, he needs sugar-free pudding, or he needs a pack of sugar-free cookies or whatever. There's a full slice of cake offered, but it's highlighted yellow because he probably shouldn't have that. But then next to it, the alternate is a half a piece of cake. We took a very liberalized approach to this because residents, we hear it over and over again. Why can't I have what they're having? Why can't I have, I want a piece of cake too. So here, we're alerting the, the person who's placing the order that, you know, why don't you see if they would like a half a piece of cake that satisfies, you know, the low carbohydrate, but he also gets to eat what his friends are eating. So I'd also want to show how on the left there in the gray, you see what he has ordered. So he wanted to have the, the spring green salad, but that has um, almonds on it. So the when he selects that, he's prompted to exclude the nuts. So he is able to have the salad. He added on chicken. He decided he wanted a couple of dressings and then we exclude the nuts. And then he decided, well, I'll have some rice with my salad and I'm gonna have that half a piece of cake. And then he also added um, an ice cream. And that's where you could also customize. You could say, you know, we're gonna offer ice cream all the time with cake. So you would add that as a modifier. And then under your ice cream selection, you could also enter what are your flavors. So once they select that ice cream, it would prompt them to select a, a flavor choice. So it's really customizable. And then once that order is placed, it's communicated to the kitchen. So what you see there in that gray area is exactly what the kitchen sees as well. We have a salad with chicken, two dressings, no nuts, half a piece of cake, and a side of ice cream. I'll, I'll just add in quick as well, uh, since uh, some people may not be familiar with eMenu Choice, that all the diet information, uh, you know, below William's name and, and above sort of the gray area, all that is printed out on the kitchen tickets as well. So the, the kitchen doesn't have to keep a separate board of who's allergic to what, you know, that have, they have to never update and it's always out of date. Um, it's always printed out on every ticket that, you know, he is intolerant to tree nuts, um, intolerant to high carbohydrates, as well as the preferences um, that are on his that are on his diet card there. So if if uh, Bill were to go to the doctor and get a temporary, you know, diet order for something, 
um, that would show up on his ticket immediately as it's entered into the EHR. Um, and it would be removed immediately once that order is 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 removed. So again, it's just everything is is there and in real time, and so everybody's looking at the same source of truth. Sorry, sorry, to interrupt, Don. No, that's good. Yeah, I wanted to mention too. So this liberalized approach we took in offering a half portion. So we we did that for mainly just the desserts, and then um, for some of the higher sodium items too. But since this is scratch cooking, there is very few high sodium items. Um, it was mainly just like your ham, your bacon, those things that are naturally high in sodium. But when you're starting with, you know, a scratch recipe, you can really control the sodium. So we didn't have to offer or, you know, offer an alternate for too many of the sodium items. Related to that, Don, you know, a question here has come in on on the on sodium and understanding that it's easier to control sodium with scratch cooking. How how is it? Maybe can you just talk just for a moment about how you do that, how you control the sodium, and how you how you enhance you know salt as a flavor enhancer, how you enhance the flavor um, without the sodium, please. So. Um... When you're scratch cooking, you can start with you start with building layers of flavor with with herbs and other seasonings, and then you know some of the recipes do call for a little bit of salt, but it's not it's not an overwhelming amount. We always believe that you know your diners can add salt at the table. You can never you can never take it away. When you use products that are already prepared. They use salt as a flavor enhancer and also as a preservative. So um, I was in. That's a good question for this screen because this is. I wanted to show how we write the recipes. So under that ingredient where it says five pounds, one pound, one pound, that's a column there where you would change it if you wanted to double your yield or cut it in half or whatever. And then the method is step by step, and so. The way you start with flavor is by sauteing your your onions and your um, garlic and all of that, and then we add some flavoring right there at the beginning. Your chicken base, your nutmeg, your mustard, and that builds the flavor into the dish from the very beginning. The other thing that um, I'm going to talk about in a minute is we've created the order guide or ingredient list that goes with this, and we've recommended. Um, many salt-free ingredients. So starting with that and knowing that um, your your end product is not going to have have as much sodium as if you were to buy it already prepared. So I think we could go to the next screen here. Yeah. So this is. Um, an example of the ingredient list that I talked about. Since then, I have categorized them. So this is kind of a, just a laundry list, looking at each recipe, what's needed. And then I've categorized it now into your categories of dry goods, freezer, meats, produce, um, you know, your dairy and cooler. And one of the things that we did, like I mentioned, was actually looking at ingredients from the perspective of what's in them, what do we recommend? No salt added tomato products, um, low sodium bases. And we know the products that are available because Patrick is in cook kitchens and cooking and he places orders for many locations. He knows what's out there and what's available. We also did, um, when we we're building these ingredient lists, looked at kind of giving you two different options. So if you want to use fresh cut items, um, explaining what that would be, or if you prefer to use a frozen. So it's kind of, you're gonna see some duplicates if, it, if you're choosing a frozen diced potato versus a fresh cut diced potato. We try to really be aware of and offer ideas for different products to buy. And um, especially with the availability issues, you know, so looking at, no, we just really can't, we really can't, you know, do all of this fresh. So then what's the alternative to that? 
So then um, taking it one step further with the order guide, because we're using these menus and maintaining them um, in some kitchens that use US foods, we are maintaining that order guide in US foods. And for any other US foods customers, we can easily copy that order guide to, to them. So that's another thing that's just going to be built and ready to go. And here's an example of um, one of the items. So the potatoes, the diced skin on red blanched refrigerated, that's a fresh and here's, so if you're thinking, well, we don't have time to cut potatoes, clean and peel and cut potatoes. So many of these things come already prepared. You know, you can order whole green peppers or you can order diced green peppers. You can order whole potatoes or you can order them already diced. And I wanted to show too, um, I know Mark has mentioned a couple of times the cost you know, is scratch cooking that much more expensive? And I wanted to show an example here of, so for these clean, diced and blanched Fred Rush, um, fresh red potatoes, it's um, a little um, under a penny per ounce. So if we go to the next screen. This is kind of a double example showing price and health. So here's a, a mashed potato skin on boil in the bag potato, 15 ingredients. If you look on the far right on, uh, in the gray column there, the sodium is 500 milligrams per serving. So that gets to back to what Mark was just asking about. When you look in the ingredient list, um, it says salt. I don't know. I think there's an error. It lists salt twice. I'm not sure why. But then there's other ingredients at the end. So we have 15 ingredients. The sodium is 500 milligrams. I believe that's for a five ounce serving. So in senior living, we'd probably do a four ounce serving. So it would be 400 milligrams. And the cost per four ounce serving is 59 cents. So if we go to the next screen, our homemade skin on mashed potatoes has five ingredients. The potatoes, the cubed and um, parboiled red potatoes that were just I highlighted on the order guide, milk, butter, a little bit of salt, two teaspoons for 44 servings is not much, and then some white pepper. So the cost of your potatoes is $14.72. The milk is $1.40, the butter is $2.13. So your total for these five ingredients for a four ounce serving is 41 cents. So you come in lower on cost and then also five ingredients versus 15. And so which would you rather eat? And it says there um, step by step how to make those potatoes. And you steam the already um, cubed potatoes, you warm your milk and butter, you place them all together in the mixer and voila, you have mashed potatoes. And then um, under the notes, and we did this quite a bit as well. So this is one of Patrick's tricks. So I, Maybe I need 12 pounds of potatoes. So I'm ordering a 10 pound bag. What do I do? I don't want to order, you know, and then I have eight pounds just hanging out. What do I do with those? So there's a note there that if you need to bulk it out a little, throw in some dried potatoes with a little bit extra milk and butter, and you can increase your yield a little bit, and you still have, you know, homemade mashed potatoes. Next screen. So, um, yeah, questions. I think that's all I had of, on fresh menus. Yeah, thank you, Don. And again, thank you, Matt. So, there is a question here um, on kind of the minimum qualifications and experience that someone needs working in the kitchen in order to prepare the menus that you've developed, Don. I think it goes back to. I know you said you don't. You don't need to have Patrick's experience in the kitchen. Um, but, um, you know, kind of what would be the minimum level of skill necessary to accomplish the menus that you've developed? You know, um, that's a really good question. I would think that if, you know, they, whether or not you are cooking from scratch or heating your food, 
you need to have a pretty basic understanding of you know measuring ingredients and knife skills and how to heat properly heat the food the equipment that you have available in your kitchen and then you know um how to read a recipe so these recipes aren't any different than what you would find online or in a cookbook and i would think that you know they if there's an understanding of how to read a recipe how to make a soup from scratch you know can they dice an onion can they cut a carrot and celery do they know what the word saute means then they should be able to do that so would yeah, that I'll be just, like, just like an experienced line cook could, oh could yeah. easily oh yeah. yeah i mean we yeah that's even way more experienced than <laughs> that's more than okay experience. fantastic yeah, I yeah just, I no, just a line cook should definitely be able to make most of perfect of what we've written um i was going back even you know as as this is the first time stepping into a kitchen um you know we have we are currently implementing fresh menus in a location where they have hired us to um train alongside the the menus so you know there's always that option too yeah i was just going to yeah. underscore too here with the recipe on the on the uh on the screen is that you know uh, Don had said it before, but I think they went to really above and beyond kind of expectations of, of most folks on how the recipes are written. And a lot of care was put into making them understandable for, you know, anyone. I mean, how many times have you read a recipe online where like the steps just don't make any sense and they're contradictory and, and things like that? And so these recipes were developed, you know, by Don, by Patrick by like real people that care about this stuff that are obviously very passionate um, versus, yeah, I think sometimes you just get like AI created recipes where it's like step one is like buy the ingredients, step two is like question marks, and then step three is plate the food. And it's like, well, I don't understand how we got from one to three, but all of these are very like painstakingly prepared by by Don and Patrick and team just to to make sure that they're understandable for kind of all levels of folks in the kitchen. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, and I I just say I want to add my a little bit of my own story for the listeners the participants today in the webinar. So, yeah, uh, by the way, Patrick that we're talking about Patrick Nicholson is the 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 other side of PDN um Don's uh, spouse. And I worked, I had the pleasure of working with Patrick, uh, was a chef in one of my buildings years ago when I was in senior living operations. And, you know, for those of you participating today who understand, you know, the, the raw food costs, that's like the third highest expense in your budget. And I'll, I am always grateful for what Patrick taught me in how scratch cooking um, and this approach that you've taken in fresh menus, I mean, literally saved us a ton of money. And our satisfaction scores in the dining room went up a lot, especially residents who were able to, you know, like they, they we didn't have to say, well, you can't have that because, you know, ever what dietary restriction. It was like, these kinds of menus open the door to just, I guess, more freedom of choice, or I mean, they could just eat what was on the menu. And I really always appreciated that experience in, in working with Patrick. And I see that uh, in these menus, Don, um, and just know from my own experience what that means in the dining room. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention too, so, we have looked at some of the, the other menu systems out there and we um it is frustrating as as matt would say to a couple of times i would look at them and i would say and these are menu systems that are in the senior livings like it doesn't tell me even what pan to use it just says you know pan you're making a bar in a pan so is it is it a cake pan is it a sheet pan or what you know and if you have questions, there's no one to go to. I mean, these are just, who knows? Mm -hmm. Us, 
we went to painstaking detail to talk about the pans and I even included a guide on how to cut, you know, what any springs you should get from the pans. And there's, you can always call us. Like if you find a mistake in a recipe from some system that you bought, you know, who do you call? But here you'll be able to call us and say, you know, this isn't working or I don't understand it or, um, yeah. The other thing that we made a decision on is um, we went away from using a flour-based roux to more of a cornstarch slurry because of the gluten intolerance and the gluten-free. And just to make sure that, you know, so anytime you're using a thickener, you're not going to have to worry about, is this okay for our, our gluten intolerant residents? If you use cornstarch, you know, there's other ingredients that might have gluten that's, I mean, that makes it a moot point. But as far as the thickener goes, we, we decided, you know, to do that. And you can always customize back, use a roux if you prefer, but we did, we did decide that it was important that we, um, that we take that into consideration. For sure. Um, that is it for the questions coming in. Any other closing co uh, comments, Dawn and or Matt? I uh, know no, nothing for me. I just uh, thanks again, everybody, for for being here. And um, I have Jim's number on here for for us. Jim can provide you with the details you need, and then you know, as far as the menu choice goes, get you set up with a, a personalized demo to show you fresh menus and any other features that you're interested in. Um, and yeah, Don, I'll turn it over to you for any any other closing comments. No, I there's my contact information. You know, if you have questions, you know, any anything you'd like to know, I'm happy to help. And I appreciate I appreciate um, Mark inviting inviting me to participate and Matt for you know allowing PDN to be part of eMenu Choice. Yes, we tried for a long time and, and we're so happy to, to be working together on this. I'm just so proud of what we put together um, collectively. The, the items, the, the menus, the, the tools to make it work, it's just all of it is, is really great. Awesome. Thanks again, you guys, for being able to join us today. Appreciate it so much. Again, feel free, participants, to contact these guys directly. Or you can always, again, hit up one of us at Eldermark and we can connect you. Our next regularly scheduled Leadership Forum webinar is set for October 5th at 12 o'clock Central Time. Watch for an email blast or you can always sign up at eldermark.com and, uh, and go to the webinar calendar and sign up there for um, any of our webinars, including this series. We offer a lot of different webinars on a lot of different topics, refreshers and so on, especially for those of you with uh, perhaps uh, turnover in staff and you need to get people trained quickly. Again, feel free to reference our reference, uh, uh, reference library of webinars and other training materials on our training center. If you need access to that, contact support at eldermark.com, your client services manager, or myself, and we can connect you. Again, thanks so much. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Dawn. And uh, we hope that you, uh, as participants, will join us again next month. Thank you for your good work, and we will talk to you again soon.